And the only guy to score playing one game Bobby played with. Bobby also fought him in a practice. I was going to say Patrick Seals. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He's yeah. Really, on, honestly, re <clears throat> really nice kid too. I, I, he's a Michigan kid, so I skated with him. You know, getting ready for that year in Detroit, and we never actually once talked about it. But one of the nicest kids, just yeah, had a yeah, obviously a shitty situation with the Clarky thing, but yeah. um, yeah, I never held a grudge. Like everybody was like, you know, I, I said something in the media about somebody had mentioned fighting a teammate and i said well he's not my teammate he's not on the team he hasn't made the team but you know he essentially you know took a player out for the year and i never held a grudge against that i just addressed the situation the way it should have been addressed immediately and fought him and I, honestly when he got called up we never talked about it because it was water under the bridge we that's the way you look at it in the room you i, I would have taken him for a beer and had a conversation about it if i felt like it needed to be done but it didn't he just he wasn't he nice kid. But he wasn't going to be part of our future. Yeah, that's the that's the way I looked at it. You know. Did you find a good yeah, one, Bobby? Did, heard you, he did, you get, did you get did, did you get him with a good one? Do you remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got you one did, or eh? two in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was in the back with Clarky, obviously, and you know it was very emotional. Stoner was back there because he was hurt and crying, and you know had seen the the, the way things developed and. Um, you know, they, they actually, if he had stayed on the ice, Neeler was going to fight him. Broussard was getting into him. So it, it was just a safety thing at this point and, and, you know, yeah. not trying to take away from a day of training camp at this point. So, you know, he got, he got pulled off the ice for that. And um, yeah, it was, it, that was the end of it. There was really no conversation about it. It was, so we all realized actually, it wasn't you, a bad hit. And you actually did him the favor of his life. You're going to say, you're going to fight me because if you don't, Chris Neal's going to get you. So you did him the biggest yeah. favor of his life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I thought Guy Boucher was going to fight him too. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. He, he was going to run the gauntlet. And, and you know, it, it, honestly, it was nothing. It was just, it was, it was the right thing to do to get him off the ice for himself and then let him start it. He was, he was projected to go there anyway, let him start. And, and when he came up and played, nobody, nobody held anything against him. Even Clarkie, no, nobody, nobody had any yeah. bad things to say about him. It's just a hit you don't throw in training camp. Exactly. So, okay. I'm going to ask about this um, because when you watch the, that defenseman is supposed to come and pinch down on that forward, if I'm not mistaken. And he, Clarkie, has his head down. And I understand it's training camp, but this is a guy who's trying to make the National Hockey League. And if he doesn't make the hit, does he not make the National? That's my point. So when I saw it, I didn't think egregious play. I thought partially Clark's fault for not yeah. protecting himself better. Yeah. You Am I just, wrong? When you, you're not wrong, no. But when, you, when you're in training camp, you don't expect that, especially as a veteran guy. Um, you don't, you don't go in there knowing that somebody's coming like a freight train. Um, it's different when you go in there in a game and you and you're aware of your surroundings a little more. in In that situation, yeah, Clark, you should, probably should have been more prepared. Uh, for one, knowing that you know, and and then like you just have to know your surroundings and who's on the ice. And like I I I hate training camp right. games. There are a million miles an hour to nowhere. I've always disliked them. Um, Nope. Everybody's trying to learn a system. So everybody's out of spots. It's just, yeah, I, Clarky would probably be the first to say his head should have been up, but you just don't, you, you never expect to hit that hard in training camp. You, you're, you know, you're rubbing guys out along the wall. You're, you're finishing checks for sure, but not, not like that. So, um, but Chris, you know, to Patrick Chris Seelos, credit he, in training camp. Well, and then that's that's part of the reason you got to know who's on the ice because yeah because right Neeler's coming yeah 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 so Patrick Seelos is a hundred percent supposed to hit make that hit but he's nobody follows through like that you know what was uh what was what type of player was Seelos game though what, what was he like what was his mo as a player does anybody know he was like, just uh, a regular JBD. kind of just yeah like yeah so Chris Neal plays like that in training camp but that's what. Chris Neal's earned that, and you expect that. It's like you got to kind of know a training camp. Number one, do I have a legitimate chance of making the team? Obviously, you want to go out and do that, but I'll take. I'll give you a great example. We had a training camp, and Shane Knighty made the team. 
because he went after Alexi Ash, and you remember that, and, and everybody loved it because that was the right thing to do. MacArthur already had concussion problems, and you go make a hit on that guy. Just you got to know the surroundings when you're trying to make the team too. So, and again, it happens fast. It's a mistake. You move on, but that's just that's not earning any points in training camp. You're not the coaches aren't saying, "Wow, look at that defenseman. He just stepped up and helped MacArthur. We're putting him on the team." <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. just, but I don't believe. Your homework. I'm trying to remember. I don't believe that hit to be overly. He didn't run him over. I'll tell you. It, it was, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you a story, Wally. Here's. here's Hang on a sec, Yorkie. Bobby, just tell me about that hit. It, Am I wrong? He it, didn't run him over. He he, I he didn't run him over. He fin he finished the hit. Uh, he finished a hard hit. He was right. I mean, Clarky Clarky had him. his head on, and he he just caught him on the button. Honestly, that's just all it was. Yeah. But you know, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't an outrageous hit by any means. Yeah, that's all. all right, sorry, Yogi. No, it's just it's it, it's whatever. It's a, it was. Uh, it's one of those things, and when you you can't, it's tough to blame anybody. It is what it is. Bobby did the right thing. Yeah. He's just lucky it wasn't newer. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm get, I remember getting off the ice, and I was like, "Did I just fight in training camp?" <laughs> I was like, "Here's the guy with bad, I, bad hands, bad knuckles." You're like, "Oh god." That was the worst. And the worst yeah. part about it was like they're after the fight. They're like, "Are you going back out there?" And I'm like, "I'm not going back on the ice today. I I just fought in training camp. I'm going home. <laughs> like, see, see you guys later. tomorrow." <laughs> I, I just remember I whatever I we were wish that hit. doing of a story. It was over. We were doing that's now the story of training camp for the day. Yeah, all that prep work I'd yeah. done didn't matter at that point. Yeah, right. no, I was, right. I was, I was like, I, I only wish yeah. it happened in the first shift, not the fifth. <laughs> <laughs>